Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about overview of the brain, it will be a kind of introduction. So this is the skull cap and you know we need to remove the skull cap to see the underlying brain. So let me just open it and this is what we have is the brain. Now it's just to give you an orientation about how it is lying within the brain box. Uh, we have removed the dura mater and just uh, this is to show you how it is lying deep inside so this is the brain and as you have seen just now that uh, there is hardly any space left once we put it inside so according to the Monroe Kelly doctrine the three tissues are lying within the brain box that is brain blood and CSF now there is hardly any dead space for any of the three to expand so any of one will expand then obviously remaining two will have to compress and the compressible thing is the brain so suppose if there is a, an accumulation of the blood then this brain tissue will get compressed or if there is an excessive CSF inside then again this brain tissue has to compress so that is Monroe Kelly doctrine. Now as I told you we have removed the dura so what we see is a thin pia matter all around covering the brain. See this, this is a pia matter and some of the blood vessels, cerebral blood vessels are visible from the surface. See this. Now let's just see some of the measurements of the brain so it is bit heavier so what is the weight in an adult male on an average it weighs 1400 to 1500 grams and in an adult female on an average it weighs 12 to 1300 grams now just imagine this much heavy brain we need to hold over our cervical spine along with the skull, along with the soft tissue, along with the blood, along with the CSF. Now just imagine, let me show you cervical spine. This is the cervical spine. Okay. So smallest vertebra out of all are the cervical one and they need to and they have to carry this much of weight. So it is approximately weighing one brick. Now just imagine we need to carry a brick all along all the time while doing different activities so to get rid of this much of weight what is needed we need to literally float this brain in the CSF so all around brain and spinal cord and within the brain and spinal cord within the cavities there lies CSF that is a watery fluid and literally this brain and spinal cord are floating in the CSF. So what happens with the CSF? The effective vein over the spine will reduce. It reduces to just 50 grams. I'm repeating just 50 grams. Just imagine from 1.5 kilogram to just 50 grams. So that is the importance of having CSF and that is the importance of floating of the brain within the CSF. Now let's discuss some of the fascinating facts of human brain for its functionality. So as you know it is just 1400 grams that is equivalent to 2% of the body weight but how much blood it needs you know that is on an average 1 6th of the total cardiac output that is 750 ml of blood per minute that is 45 liters. I'm repeating 45 liters of the blood per hour and per day you can calculate so just imagine the functional significance of the brain again it needs one-fifth of the total oxygen requirement of the body okay 20 percentage of total oxygen needed from entire body is to the brain now let's overview parts of the brain. Developmentally it is divided into forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain or we can say prosencephalon, mesencephalon and rhombencephalon. So overall if we see it is having cerebrum. 
say so this is the cerebrum posterior inferiorly cerebellum say so this and here is the brain stem okay mid brain pons and medulla this medulla is continuous with spinal cord now each cerebrum is made up of two cerebral hemispheres which are connected in the midline by corpus callosum so if we cut it open and see it from the side say this is how it looks like so now you can clearly make out this is the cerebrum cerebellum and brain stem made up of midbrain pons and medulla and similar thing you will see on the left side now developmentally as i told it is made up of forebrain midbrain and hindbrain prosencephalon mesencephalon and rhombencephalon so what is prosencephalon it is nothing but made up of two subdivisions telencephalon and diencephalon what is telencephalon what you see on the surface is the telencephalon cerebral cortex and the white matter now the cerebral cortex is convoluted so two third of the portion is hidden inside and only one third of the portion is seen on the surface so the surface projections are termed as gyri okay that is a plural form and singular is the gyrus so single elevation is termed as gyrus and single depression is termed as sulcus so as we can call them as gyri and sulci surface projections and depressions and it is just because the surface area is 2200 square centimeters and that needs to be accommodated within this brain box so obviously it has to get convoluted upon itself to make it compact enough to accommodate within the brain box so that is about telencephalon this telencephalon or the process of formation of cerebral cortex is termed as telencephalization this is highest in human brain so as we can say that human brain is highest in development it is just because of telencephalon and deep inside the telencephalon we will get a cavity that cavity is termed as ventricle so the ventricle or cavity of the telencephalon is lateral ventricle so deep inside you will see lateral ventricle now next to the telencephalon this area is diencephalon diencephalon is nothing but thalamus and there are total 5 thalami constituting diencephalon namely thalamus itself hypothalamus epithalamus metathalamus and somewhere over here will be subthalamus so there are five thalamus together forming diencephalon and the cavity of diencephalon this territory cavity of diencephalon is third ventricle now this third ventricle will get communicated with lateral ventricle which is situated deep inside this is septum pellucidum so deep inside will be the cavity of lateral ventricle this is the third ventricle which is sagittally oriented so as we have cut it open the two halves of the ventricles are divided into each cerebral hemispheres so this is the right half of third ventricle which is in connection with the lateral ventricle through this foramen this is termed as interventricular foramen or foramen of monroe okay so the portion of cerebrum beyond this interventricular foramen or foramen of monroe this portion okay this portion plus this entire portion belongs to the telencephalon and beyond that is the diencephalon this area up to mid brain okay so just remember the brain particularly the brain and spinal cord they are having cavity throughout okay and the cavities of the brain are termed as ventricles cavity of the spinal cord is termed as central canal they are continuous with each other so we will get some connections between this ventricles and central canal and this 
cavity or the ventricles are in connection with the subarachnoid space which is situated between arachnoid matter and pia matter over here all around as we have discussed and the CSF which is secreted into this ventricle will get shifted from these cavities to the subarachnoid space there is a continuous circulation of CSF and will get absorbed somewhere over here in relation to the superior sagittal sinus so we are discussing about the formation of CSF and a specific device made up of double folding of pia matter and capillary tufts forming a specific plexus that is termed as choroid plexus now a portion of choroid plexus is seen in this section so I just wanted to show you how a choroid plexus looks like as I told you it is nothing but double folding of pia matter containing tufts of capillary say this this is the choroid plexus and it is not only seen in lateral ventricle but it is also found in third ventricle and fourth ventricle say this this is how it looks like this is choroid plexus okay now this is left cerebral hemisphere and you can clearly make out the cavity of telencephalon that is lateral ventricle this is left half of the cavity of diencephalon that is third ventricle and the communication between these two you can clearly make out from over here this is interventricular foramen or foramen of Monroe okay so this is how these two ventricles are connected so that is about prosencephalon or forebrain made up of telencephalon and diencephalon next to it is the mesencephalon or midbrain this is the least developed part of central nervous system and it remains rudimentary so this is the midbrain okay this is the territory of midbrain and as we have discussed all the portion of brains are having cavity inside so uh, this is a small cavity like a duct cavity of mesencephalon this is termed as cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of Sylvius okay so above it is connected to the third ventricle and below it is connected to the cavity of hindbrain so below the midbrain will be hindbrain so obviously it connects forebrain above to the hindbrain below so this is the cavity of midbrain or mesencephalon that is cerebral aqueduct now next to the midbrain is the hindbrain it is made up of three structures pons, medulla and cerebellum so hindbrain or rhombencephalon it is subdivided into metencephalon and myelencephalon the metencephalon develops into pons in front and cerebellum behind and from myelencephalon medulla oblongata is developed okay so this is a cavity of hindbrain fourth ventricle and above it is connected to the cerebral aqueduct and below it is continuous as uh, central canal of spinal cord just because the medulla is continuous as spinal cord and so as the cavity of fourth ventricle will continue as central canal now again as I told you there are choroid plexuses all around secreting CSF so the tuft of capillary is embedded within double layer of the pia matter or tila choroidea they are found in relation to lateral ventricle third ventricle and fourth ventricle so all these three ventricles are having choroid plexuses which are secreting CSF and there is a continuous CSF circulation so within all the ventricles continuously CSF is secreted and from the roof of this fourth ventricle somewhere over here we will get three foramina foramen of Megandi in the midline and foramen of Lushka on either side these three foramina will communicate ventricle with the subarachnoid space and CSF from this ventricle will enter into subarachnoid space will fill subarachnoid space around brain and spinal cord and finally it gets absorbed somewhere over here here lies superior sagittal sinus so along the lateral wall of superior sagittal sinus the CSF will get absorbed so there is a continuous circulation of CSF now something about cerebellum or the small brain so like two cerebral hemispheres connected in the midline by corpus callosum similarly there are two cerebellar hemispheres that is a portion of hindbrain which are connected in midline by vermis now similar thing is seen over the cerebellum so this is a cerebral cortex which is having convolutions 
the cerebellar cortex is also having similar kind of surface irregularity so there are some surface projections and there are depressions here the surface projections and depressions are termed as sulci and gyri respectively similarly the surface projections and depressions over the cerebellar cortex are termed as folia and fissures folia plural form or folium and fissures or fissure like to accommodate the large surface area of cerebral hemisphere we need such surface irregularities and convolutions similar thing is applied to the cerebral cortex so much of surface area has to be accommodated within the hind brain below the tentorium cerebelli and so as 15 percentage of the surface area one five i'm repeating only one five 15 percentage of the surface area is seen over the surface and 85 percentage of the surface area of cerebellar cortex is seen in the form of fissures so it is hidden what you see is just 15 percentage of the surface area and that is best seen in the section let me show you the section see here the section this is the cerebellar cortex and you can see the fissures are reaching deep inside within the white matter okay and you can see each fissure is having a portion of cerebellar cortex so 85 percentage of the surface area of cerebellar cortex is hidden inside forming a branching tree appearance this is termed as arbor vitae cerebelli so this is how the cerebellar cortex is oriented Now let's discuss some of the facts of cerebral cortex. Its weight is on an average 600 g that is approximately 40 percentage of the entire brain weight. So it is very crucial thing and it accommodates large number of cells. The cells are either neurons particularly the cell bodies and neuroglia. So on an average entire cerebral cortex accommodates 10 to 15 billion neurons and the neuroglia are five times to the number of neurons that is approximately 50 billion neuroglia just imagine this many number of cells neurons and neuroglia are accommodated within cerebral cortex if we talk about the number of neurons in terms of weight then out of 600 grams of weight of cerebral cortex 180 g belongs to the weight of neurons and remaining 410 g is the weight of neuroglia now throughout the cerebral cortex within the neurons within the cell bodies all around it can store the memory now memory is stored in the form of rna molecules or small polypeptides and just imagine the items it can store in this form or in the form of rna molecules or polypeptide throughout the cerebral cortex is equivalent to 10 raised to 11 items okay so that is the capacity of brain to store the information now let's discuss some more details about the cerebral cortex so as you can see these two cerebral hemispheres are connected in the midline okay and if we discuss in terms of the external features so it is having three surfaces this is what we see from outside is the suprolateral surface what is hidden when we open it up is the medial surface okay so let me tell you it again this is the medial surface it is lying like this this is the suprolateral surface and below will be the inferior surface in terms of poles there are three poles frontal pole which is related to the frontal bone let me show you so if we put inside the skull just see it is related to three bones and accordingly there are three poles and all these three poles are lying in three different cranial fossas anterior middle and posterior cranial fossa so in anterior cranial fossa there lies frontal bone so this is the frontal pole middle cranial fossa this is temporal bone so deep inside will be temporal pole and in posterior cranial fossa this is occipital bone so deep inside will be the occipital pole let me show you again so this is frontal pole temporal pole and occipital pole so it is having three surfaces and three poles 
plus it is having different lobes like frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe and deep inside will be central lobe or insular lobe okay which is hidden say this deep inside you will get a portion of or hidden portion of cerebral cortex say this this is insular lobe and at the junction of diencephalon and telencephalon somewhere over here there lies limbic lobe that constitutes the limbic system so this is something about the external features of cerebral hemisphere you will learn it in detail in a particular demonstration of cerebral cortex so this is regarding an overview and highlight of the brain hope you understood well thanks for watching